Shalom. This is Dottie, the Bantu Prophetess. Join me every Sunday live podcast from 2 to 3.30 p.m. for TYU. That's Restoration of Yaakov's Unity. Remember, that's 2 to 3 p.m. Sunday live podcast on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Remember, there are only two kinds of people. Those who do good, the Bantus, or the sons of the Most High, Yahweh, so meaning Anini, the I am that I am, which is light, and those who do evil, Cain, the son of Lucifer, the father of lies, a murderer, a destroyer, thief, the original albino, or darkness. Scripture reference for this is Mishle, or Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 11, verse 13, and chapter 29, and verse 10. And also Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. And also 1 John chapter 3, verses 12 and verse 14 through 16. I'll be reading now the 10 words. This is taken from Deuteronomy or Devarim in Hebrew, chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. And it reads, Ayah Yahweh, so nini nanini, you're Bantu, Elohim Yahweh which brought you Bantu out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage or slavery. And you Bantu shall have no other Elohim before me or gods. You Bantu shall not make you Bantu any graven image or any likeness of anything that is the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. You Bantu shall not bow down yourself unto them nor serve them. For Ayah Yahweh, your Elohim, so nini no nini, your bad to Elohim, Yahweh, am a jealous Elohim, Yahweh. Visit me the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, to the third and fourth generations of those that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments, or ten words. You, bad to, shall not take the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, in vain, for Yahweh, so Nini Nanini, will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Keep or guard the Sabbath day to sanctify it or set it apart. As Yahweh, so Nini Nonini, your Bantu Elohim, Yahweh, has commanded you, Bantu, six days you, Bantu, shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh, so Nini Nanini, your Bantu Elohim, Yahweh. In it, you, Bantu, shall not take the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, Yahweh, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor any of your manservants, nor your maidservants, nor your ox, nor your ass, nor any of your Bantu cattle, nor your stranger, nor any that is within your gates, that your Bantu servants and your Bantu maidservants may rest as well as you, Bantu. Remember that you, Bantu, were a servant in the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt, and that Yahweh, so nini no nini, your Bantu Elohim, brought you Bantu out there through a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh, so nini no nini, your Bantu Elohim, Yahweh, commanded you Bantu to guard the Sabbath day. Honor your Bantu father and your Bantu mother, as Yahweh, your Bantu Elohim, has commanded you Bantu that your Bantu days may be prolonged and that it may go well with you Bantu in the land, South Africa, which Yahweh, so Nina Nanina, your Elohim Yahweh gives you Bantu. You Bantu shall not murder. Neither shall you Bantu commit adultery. Neither shall you Bantu steal. Neither shall you Bantu bear false witness against your brother. Neither shall you Bantu desire your brother's wife Neither shall you bant to covet your brother's house, his field, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is your brother's. That is taken from Deuteronomy again, chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. Voice of the day. The reference can be found in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 19. The word of wisdom. Sex is food for the husband and wife. That reference can be found in Mishle or Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18. Again, the word of wisdom is sex is the food for husband and wife. 
Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18. A true prophet follows the good shepherd, Yeshua, the Mashiach of Yahweh. So nini na nini. They ask Yahweh, reveals divine or spiritual revelation. They foretell Yahweh's will and desire for the future. And you can find that reference in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. And also 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. But a false prophet follows Roman and Greek mythology, Lucifer, Venus, Shatan, the devil, and they ask man or predicts the prophecy, and they prophesy, excuse me, concerning carnally or fleshly lust that forecast man's will, desire for the future events. And you can find that reference in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, and also 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, verse 14 through 16. Okay, also I want to give those an opportunity to receive Yeshua's salvation. How to read the scripture, and you can begin reading in Deuteronomy, the Old Covenant, then you read in the book of Matthews, then the New Covenant and the Revelation, which is in the New Covenant. Then you can read the Psalms and the Proverbs. You can read, um, you can do this all in a month by simply adding 30 to uh, five times for whatever that day's date. And like I said, I wanted to give you an opportunity to receive the salvation which is Yeshua, Jesus, he is the salvation of the world. So if you would simply repeat this prayer, Yahweh, so nini nanini, I have sinned against you. Please forgive my sins. I do believe that Yeshua, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected for my sins. Please come into my heart and be my salvation. And now you can get water baptized, and I, like I said, it's simply by immersion. Make sure you get immersed because that's the showing that you have identified with what he said. You've been buried with him, and you're being resurrected now as a new creation. All right. The theme for this uh, broadcast will be the true Gentiles. The theme, again, is the true Gentiles. The definition of Gentile, according to the Bantu Kosa Scrolls, the Holy Bible, one not a Bantu, one not following Elohim or God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and or Isaac and Jacob, Yahweh Sonini Nanini, one not believing on Yeshua, the Bantu Mashiach or Messiah of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm going to be reading Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 42 and Mishle, or Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 through 19. And I just want to remind you, you are listening to Dati the Bantu Prophetess here at the Restoration of Jacob's Unity. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it reads, and I want you to pay close attention in my studies here because as it began to open up, I realized what it meant to be a Gentile because we were taught within our traditional Christian uh, backgrounds that being a Gentile means that you were not Jewish. But I beg to differ with that now because I'm learning that to say that you're a Gentile and you're not Jewish, it's backwards. We're actually Bantus. And those who are the Gentile are considered the nations such as the European nations, the Arab nations, and the, the um, Asian nations. So the true Gentiles are not what we've been told it's just the reverse. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, or they were assembled together. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them, verse 3, and there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it, the fire, sat upon each of them. And they, 120, were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As Sonini Nanini, the Spirit, gave them utterance. 
And there were dwelling. This is where I want you to really pay attention because this is what got me when it came out to understanding who the true Gentiles were. Verse number five. And there were dwelling, it says dwelling, at Jerusalem, Gentiles. Your King James Version, it says, it reads as Jews, but that's a misprint. It should be Gentiles, and you'll understand why when we continue through this chapter. And there dwelt at Jerusalem Gentiles devoted, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was heard, the Gentiles came together, and they, and excuse me, and were amazed because Every man heard them speaking in his own language. Now, if you notice, I'm reading in such a way, and I'm actually restoring back some of the language that would be seen in the Bantu scrolls. So listen very carefully. Verse, verse 7, and they were, and the Gentiles were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Gal Galileans? It should read Bantu not Galil or Galileans, it shouldn't read Bantus. So let me read that again, verse seven. And they, the Gentiles, were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Bantu? And how, verse eight, how we hear the Gentiles, every man in our own Gentile tongue, wherein we Gentiles were born. Verse nine, Parthians and Medes and El Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and in Pontus, and Asia. Phrygia, verse 10, Phrygia, and Philia, uh, in Mitzrayim, or Egypt, in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene. And if you notice, I'll pause right there, if you notice all these nations that they're mentioning, they're either European, Arabic nations, or Asian nations. Let me read verse 10 again. Phrygia and Philia in Egypt or Mitzrayim and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Now they use the word Jew there properly because that's what it is because it's talking about the European Jews here. Cretes and Arab, Arab, Arabians, Arab, Arab, Arabians, excuse me, Arabians. We Gentiles do hear them, the Bantus, the 120 Bantus, speaking in our Gentile tongues the wonderful works of Elohim Yahweh. Now, you see, that's why I wanted to say that, because if we know that it was the Bantus that were speaking in the tongues and not the other way around, the Arabians and the Cretes, they, they weren't speaking, and some of the others, they weren't speaking that it was a, it was a foreign matter to them. And you go to verse 12, and it says, and the Gentiles were all amazed and were in doubt. See, the Bantus, we don't doubt. Whatever the Father says, according to his word, we believe. And according to the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words, it says we don't lie, steal, cheat, or covet anything that belongs to our Bantu brothers. So that's why we have to look out one for another and make sure we are taken care of and make sure that there are no poor among us who are the true Bantu, the true people of the book. And verse 12 again. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what means this? Other Gentiles mocking said, these men are full of new wine. These Bantu men, not just men, these Bantu men. See, when they translated or, or attempted to twist everything, they took the Bantu out and they made him just to say men. But no, we're talking about the Bantu men. It makes a difference. Verse 14, and Peter, the Bantu, Peter was a Bantu. All the disciples were Bantus, all the disciples, but they won't tell you that. They'll make it seem as though, oh, there was something foreign. No, all the, the Lord Yeshua, he was a Bantu Messiah. They all were Bantus. And remember, Bantu just means people, people of the book, people that the Almighty Yahweh, so Nini Nanini, called. He said those who worship the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 14, and Peter standing up with the 11 Bantu, lifted up his voice and said unto the Gentiles, you, Bantu of Judah, and all you Gentiles that dwell at Jerusalem. There's a difference. Because remember I told you, the true Jerusalem, which we weren't told, is in the continent of Africa. 
This scene is actually taking place in Africa, not in what we know as Israel, or the Levant is a new word that I learned, is what if Israel is called. It's called the Levant. No, this is taking place on the continent of Africa. Let me read verse 14 again. But Peter, standing up with the eleven band two, lifted up his voice and said unto them, the Gentiles, you men, the Bantu men of Judea, which is the Bantus, and all you Gentiles that dwell at Jerusalem. That means they're, like, they're temporarily there. Be this known to you and listen to my words. For these Bantu men are not drunken as you Gentiles suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet, the Bantu prophet, Yoel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says Elohim Yahweh, so nini na nini. Ayah will pour out of my spirit, so nini na nini, upon all Bantu flesh. I want to emphasize, I said all Bantu flesh, not upon all flesh, because all flesh does not believe in the Almighty. Only the ones he chose he chose the, the Bantus and he set them aside. That's why we've been scattered to the four corners of the earth. But that scattering is ending. It's coming to a rapid close now because the 400 years of our oppression in the nations is coming to an end. And I would give you some good news too, people. You will be receiving reparation because the Almighty said he will force, he will force the nations to pay the wages that they did not pay those who were his people those who abused his people. He said that he will recompense their wrongs. Verse 17 again. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said Elohim Yahweh, so nini na nini, a Yah will pour out of my spirit, so nini na nini, upon all Bantu flesh. And your Bantu sons and your Bantu daughters shall prophesy. And your Bantu young men shall see visions and your Bantu old men shall dream dreams. And on my Bantu servants and on my Bantu handmaids, Ayah will pour out in those days of my spirit, so nini na nini, and they shall prophesy. You see, when you're prophesying, it's proclaiming what the Almighty has done and who he is because he's in us. You can't even read the scriptures without understanding by his spirit, because we have to have his spirit and understanding to know what it means in the scriptures. That's why you have to be born of his spirit and you have to obey his commandments, because if you don't obey his commandments, you do not belong to him. You have many ministers, you have many prophets and prophetesses and evangelists and many different people professing to be of the almighty. But he said, I don't know you. You don't have my spirit and you sure don't obey my words. He said, if you don't obey my words, you're not of mine and you're not of me. And he says, first of all, without holiness, no man will see him. Verse 19. And we're in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 19. And I, Ayah, will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. This is just talking about wars. The sun shall be turned into darkness. And remember, my theme is who are the true Gentiles? Verse 20, again, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of Yahweh, so nini na nini, come. This is what we consider the great tribulation. And if you go to, this is all outside of my notes, but if you go to, um, in the book of Revelation now, I just read it, Revelation chapter 8, it speaks of that great wrath and that last three trumpets that are to be sounded, and that those who are wicked, those who are the Gentiles, the wicked Gentiles who did not repent, they will face the tribulation, and that's the great tribulation, okay? Verse 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of of Yahweh, so nini na nini, shall be saved. And you see within Judaism, they don't permit you to call the name. They'll say Hashem. And then you have others, they still say Lord and God. And then you have others, they refuse to say anything. They'll just say nothing. But as for me, being a Bantu, I choose to say Yahweh, 
And I choose to say Sonini Nanini, which is the Bantu dialect of the Kosa language. Verse 22, you men of Jacob, hear these words. Yeshua, the Bantu of Nazareth, a Bantu man approved of Elohim Yahweh, Sonini Nanini, among you Bantu, by miracles and wonders and signs, which Elohim Yahweh did by him in the midst of you Bantu. And as you Bantu yourself also know, Yeshua being delivered by the de determinate council, the Gentiles, and for knowledge of Elohim. Remember, Elohim already knew that before he did what he did. Him, you Gentiles, have taken and by wicked hands have impaled and slain him. You see, um, one of the brothers I listen to on a regular basis, he speaks about saying that the people actually murdered the Lord, Yeshua. And this would probably be a reference there, but people need to understand that Yeshua, he actually laid his life down. He said, no man takes his life, but he lay it down of his own accord and he takes it up. So he gave his life. And if you notice, he was on the earth only 33 years, but he, that was in the flesh but he's always been here in the spirit because he is spirit. So the Lord Jesus Christ did not make a mistake when he said what he said. And in verse 24, whom Elohim Yahweh, so Nini Nanini, has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible, excuse me, that Yeshua should be held by it, which is death. Remember, Yeshua, Jesus, has the spirit of the Father, so Nini Nanini. And whatever he did, he did by the will and the authority and the power of his father because he bore the spirit of his father. His father, which is the only true and the living Elohim, he embodied flesh to show us what it was to be a man and what it really means to please him. So, verse 25, and Dawid speaks concerning him, Yeshua, I foresaw Yahweh, so Nini Nini, always before my face. And this is, I'm speaking about hope here. This, the, le the next couple of verses from 25 to 28, it's going to show you the hope that we have in the resurrection of Yeshua. And in the Bantu dialect, the Izikosa dialect, it's in Umsindisi. Um Umsindisi is how you pronounce his name. Verse 25 again. For David speaks concerning him. I foresaw Yeshua, or Yahweh, so Nini Nini, always before my face. For Yahweh is on my right hand. Excuse me, let me let me start that over again. Verse 25. For David speaks concerning him, Yeshua. I foresaw Yahweh so nini nanini always before my face. For Yahweh so nini nanini is on my right hand. That's talking about David. That I, David, David, should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my David's tongue was glad. Moreover, also, my flesh shall rest in hope. This is David talking. And here is, he's going to begin to talk about the Lord Yeshua now, verse 27. Because you, Yahweh, Sunini Nanini, will not leave my, you see the difference? It's my Yeshua, my salvation. Jesus means salvation in the grave. Neither will you, Yahweh, Sonini Nanini, suffer your Yahweh, Sonini Nanini, Holy One, that's Yeshua, to see corruption. Verse 28, you have made known to me the ways of life. You, Yahweh, Sonini Nanini, shall make me, Yeshua, full of joy with your continents. Verse 29, men and brethren, Bantu brethren, let me, Kepha or Peter, freely speak to you, Gentiles, of the patriarch Dawid, David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher, or his tomb, his grave, is with us unto this day. Verse 30, therefore, being a prophet, David was a prophet and a king. So when people try to say that you cannot mix, mix politics with, with religion, I beg to differ because the scriptures do not lie. Verse 30 again. Therefore, being a prophet, David, and knowing that Elohim Yahweh, so Nini Nanini, had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of your loins, according to the flesh, 
he, Yahweh, so Nina Nanini, would raise or resurrection, this is the resurrection of the Messiah to sit on his throne or his seat, not Lucifer. Remember Lucifer, I did the teaching from my studies before about Lucifer, who she is. That was her desire to sit on that throne next to the father because she wanted to be, I guess, representative as, you know, we know that the father doesn't have a wife. And it's as though she was trying to put her face, her, herself in the place of being the Almighty's wife. But it will never be, never be because it's only the Father and the Son. It's not a trinity. It's the Father and the Son, Yeshua, and the Almighty Yahweh, Sunini Nanini. Verse 31, Dawaid, seeing that this before spoke, the resurrection of the Messiah, that his, Yeshua's soul, was not left in hell, neither his flesh did seek corruption. This Bantu Yeshua has Yahweh Elohim raised up, that's the resurrection, whereof we Bantu are all witnesses. Therefore being by the right hand of Elohim Yahweh exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, which you Gentiles now see and hear. Remember this theme of this particular study that I'm teaching is who are the real Gentiles? Verse 34, and Dawid is not ascended into the heavens, but said himself, Yahweh Sunini Nanini said to my Adonai master, sit you, Yeshua, on my right hand until I, Yahweh, make your Yeshua foes, your enemies, your Yeshua footstool, Verse 36, therefore let all the house of Yaakov now assuredly, know assuredly, that Elohim Yahweh Sunini Nanini has made that same Bantu Yeshua, whom you Gentiles have impaled, both Master and Messiah. Now, when they, the Gentiles, and remember I said the Gentiles are those of the European nations, the Arab nations, and the Asian nations, those are the Gentiles. Verse 37, again, now when the Gentiles, when they heard this, the Gentiles were pricked in their heart and said to Peter, the Bantu, and to the rest of the Bantu, what shall we Gentiles do? And Peter, the Bantu said to the Gentiles, repent, be baptized, every one of you Gentiles in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah the Bantu Messiah, for the remission of sins. And you Gentiles shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit of Sunini Nainini. And you have to be baptized in the name of the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah of Nazareth. Otherwise, your baptism is not baptism. You've been baptized in something, but it's not according to the way Yeshua said to do it. Verse 39. For the promised Holy Spirit is to you Gentiles and to your Gentile children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as Yahweh, Sunini Nanini, our Bantu Elohim, Yahweh, Sunini Nanini, shall call. Remember, many are called, few are chosen. And I just want to reiterate here that you are listening to Try You, which is the restoration of Yaakob's unity with Dadi, the Bantu prophetess. Verse 40. And with many other words did he, Kepha, speak or testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves, Gentiles. Remember, as men, I want to reemphasize this, because this is not a part of my notes, but I want to encourage the men too. Then remember, you are responsible for your own household. If most men would consider this, our world would be a different world a totally different world because the men will take the lead in their homes and be those leaders and those support that we need as a society. And then they could stand like Isaiah the prophet and some of the other prophets said, as for me in my house, like Noah said, we will serve the Lord. So Nini Nanini, we will serve him. So men, I encourage you with that admonition. Okay, verse 40. And with many other words, did Peter testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves, Gentiles, from this untoward generation. Verse 41, Then they 
the Gentiles that gladly received his words. Remember, everybody will not receive everything we have to say. As a prophetess, I just speak. I can't change you. I can only give you the love and what I have learned and what the Father shows me by his spirit. And that's what I give. So I hope that you're receiving what is being spoken because it's not me you're dealing with. It. It's your Father in heaven. Verse 41 again. Then the Gentiles, they gladly received his word, were baptized. It's not going down in water, just becoming a part of an organization. It's believing because you can have wet devils also. They go in dry devil, they come out a wet devil. And everybody that calls and just says, praise the Lord or hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. That doesn't mean anything if there's no heart change. Verse 41 again. Then the Gentiles that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. How many congregations do you know today that have had anywhere near this adding? Because Father said that he's the one that adds to those who are being saved. We got a lot of gimmicks. We got a lot of schemes. We got a lot of things going on in the name of religion. But it's not according to the Father because he said he knows those whose names are written and he knows those names or not. Verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the Bantu doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Those are the four pillars for the believers is to get together, to study together, to enjoy eating together. And most of all, the most very important thing is to pray one for another. Verse 43, or excuse me, that was it. That was the end of that. Um, portion four. I just wanted to read Acts chapter two, verses one through 42. And then I'm going to take you over to uh, Mishle or Proverbs chapter one. I just read that this morning and I didn't realize that it coincided with what I was saying about who the true Gentiles are. So, and this is a thing too, as Bantus, we don't have to follow and give in to anybody. And this will be the last reading here. It's Mishle or Proverbs chapter one, verses 10 through 19. My son, my Bantu son, if sinners, Gentiles, entice you, Bantu, consent you not. If the Gentiles say, come with us, Gentile, let us, Gentiles, lay wait for blood. Remember Cain and those who follow Lucifer and all her ways, they delight in blood. That's why abortion, murder, rape, anything dealing with blood, they, they're, they're, or people eating medium rare meat, it's, the, it's a blood thing. So... Be careful in that regards. Verse 11 again. If they say, come with us, Gentiles, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for innocent, the innocent without cause. Verse 12. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. And remember, we're talking about who the Gentiles are here, which are the Asian nations, the European nations, and the Arab nations. Remember, keep that in your mind when you read the scriptures. It will make everything clear and you won't be confused anymore. Verse 13, we sinners, Gentiles, shall find all precious substance. We Gentiles shall find or shall fill our houses with spoil. And you know, I'll pause right there again because it always amazes me how someone can feel happy about taking something that is not theirs and how it's just, it doesn't make sense to me because I don't see how they can really get a satisfaction of having to do something like that. Verse 14, I'll continue. Casting your lot among us Gentiles, let us Gentiles all have one purse. My Bantu son, walk not you Bantu in the way with them. Reframe your Bantu foot from their path. For the Gentiles' feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. And please don't forget about Cain, which was the first murderer. And that is a spirit that we have running rapidly in the world, is the spirit of Cain, which is the spirit of murder, because he's doing what his wife, his mother, Lucifer, what she does. She comes to kill, to kill, to kill, to kill, steal, 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 destroy, destroy, destroy. Verse 17, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of a bird, any bird. For they, sinners, lay wait for their own blood. They, sinners, lurk privately for their own lives. So are all the ways of everyone 
that is greedy of gain. Remember, that's always the focal point in any kind of wrong. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, which take away the life of the owners thereof. If you knew who your father in heaven, Sonini Nanini, he said he's the one that make rich and he's the one that makes poor. So I just want to encourage you, Bantu, out there to be encouraged and know that the Almighty loves you. And like I said, we're in the midst of counting down to the 50 days until Pentecost or what we call the Feast of Weeks, which in which was given of the law or the Torah the first five books of Moses, and also the outpouring of the spirit of Sonini Nanini upon his Bantu people. So be encouraged and know that the Almighty is for you. Who can be against you? And this is the end of this study. Shalom, shalom, shalom. The Bantu who loves or is zealous supports his country, Africa. Understand that it means looking out for yourself by looking out for your country, Africa. Yeshua is someone who gives his life to something bigger than himself, Sonini Nanini. He is the true hero. See you next time. Yah will for the restoration of Yaakob unity with Dadi, the Bantu prophetess. Shalom.